Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vasquez and what I'm going to do in this brief presentation is discuss uh, one of the aspects of my new book uh, which discusses migraine headaches, hypothyroidism, and fibromyalgia. Uh, in this brief video we're going to talk about how does small intestinal bacterial or microbial overgrowth cause fibromyalgia. Obviously there are more details in the book than I can express here in a short video, uh, but for those of you who are interested in this topic I will review uh, what I consider to be the most uh, important uh, four considerations in the microbial etiology of fibromyalgia. In my last video on fibromyalgia, I reviewed the uh, earlier 1990 uh, American College of Rheumatology criteria for the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. This required the finding of at least uh, 11 out of 18 tender points by physical exam. Um, interestingly, and in my opinion, very controversially, uh, the 2010 criteria for the diagnosis of fibromyalgia excluded the need to uh, assess trigger points, or tender points, I should say. Um, and I discussed the controversy around this on uh, one of the pages of the book, but also this page is available from my website. Uh, and then I go on to review and summarize the current criteria for the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. So uh, if you're interested in those diagnostic uh, criteria and considerations, obviously you can access this page uh, from the book. Uh, this is available on my website for free. So what I'll do very briefly here on this page is show you my top four reasons uh, for believing and understanding that uh, microbial overgrowth of the small intestines is the ultimate cause of fibromyalgia. First of all, uh, gram-negative bacteria, which are a very um, common type of or class of bacteria in the intestines, gram-negative bacteria produce something called endotoxin, also called lipopolysaccharide, commonly abbreviated as LPS. This causes a low-grade uh, systemic inflammation. It also causes increased intestinal permeability, um, and it also causes mitochondrial and muscle impairment, and this has been shown in clinical trials with humans. Uh, it also increases sensitization to pain. So. When we look at the clinical picture of fibromyalgia, we often see low-grade inflammation, we see mitochondrial impairment, we see muscle fatigue, and we see that these patients have heightened uh, sensitivity to pain. A lot of times this is described in the uh, neurophysiologic literature and the neurology res research as central sensitization, uh, but I think we could look beyond that finding to try to understand why that finding exists. In my opinion, bacterial endotoxin is uh, the one of the major triggers of that phenomenon. Number two on my list is bacteria produced uh, D-lactic acid. D-lactic acidosis is, is well known in the practice of clinical medicine. It's also a potentially fatal condition caused by overgrowth of bacteria in the intestines. Uh, D-lactic acid is a neurotoxin and metabolic poison. Uh, in low doses it causes fatigue, muscle pain, and discognition or difficulty thinking. In higher doses, uh, higher amounts, I should say, as I mentioned before, uh, it can cause uh, severe confusion and ultimately death. But uh, I believe that these patients and a lot of patients are exposed to chronic low-dose uh, D-lactic acidosis from bacteria in their intestines. And uh, this has been documented. There was a study published in uh, 2009 that actually documented this uh, phenomenon in patients with chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, third on my list is bacteria produced uh, hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is a, a metabolite produced by bacteria, but also certain types of yeast. Um, it's known to be produced within the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, it is seen and is a major contributor, for example, to uh, ulcerative colitis, according to some uh, good research. Hydrogen sulfide uh, is similar to D-lactic acid in that it's a neurotoxin and metabolic poison. It can cause muscle fatigue. Uh, muscle pain and uh, difficulty with concentration. Anything that impairs mitochondrial function uh, and therefore energy production can cause discognition. Difficulty thinking, uh, a lot of patients refer to it as just brain fog. Finally, on this short list, and of course there are other considerations uh, mentioned in the book, but as far as my top four, the fourth one is bacteria produced tryptophanase. Tryptophanase is an enzyme that degrades tryptophan within the gastrointestinal tract. This, of course, leads to tryptophan deficiency or insufficiency. Uh, this has been documented in patients with fibromyalgia. They have low levels of tryptophan in their blood. 
tryptophan is the precursor to the neurotransmitter serotonin. So if patients don't have enough ser uh, tryptophan, they're not going to have enough serotonin. When patients don't have enough serotonin, they have pain, fatigue, carbohydrate craving, and depression, and usually some anxiety along with that. Uh, so the body takes tryptophan, converts it into serotonin, and then converts serotonin into another hormone called melatonin. When patients don't have enough melatonin, they have sleep disturbance, uh, impaired mitochondrial uh, function, and therefore impaired energy production. They have increased oxidative stress because uh, melatonin is a uh, physiologically and clinically important uh, antioxidant, uh, and it helps to protect mitochondria. So if there's not enough melatonin, patients could be expected to have uh, reduced ATP production, reduced mitochondrial function, and increased muscle fatigue. And indeed, those are things that we see in patients with uh, fibromyalgia. So this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. But I think that these uh, four considerations that I've reviewed right here certainly provide some scientific substantiation for the microbial etiology of fibromyalgia, or in other terms, how bacterial and microbial overgrowth of the small intestines can lead to the clinical picture uh, that we describe as fibromyalgia. Finally, you can tell from this diagram I've uh, drawn out some of the interconnected web-like uh, considerations uh, relevant to fibromyalgia, specifically starting up in the upper left-hand corner, how bacterial overgrowth of the small bowel uh, ultimately leads to mitochondrial impairment, oxidative stress, central sensitization, tryptophan deficiency, serotonin deficiency, melatonin deficiency, and all of these other um, sub-phenomenon that ultimately lead to the clinical presentation of fibromyalgia. These patients have chronic pain, muscle fatigue, sleep disturbance, some combination of anxiety and depression, neurocognitive dysfunction, and often they have environmental intolerance as well because the lipopolysaccharide from gram-negative bacteria uh, impairs the cytochrome P450 pathway so that these patients are unable to metabolize and detoxify chemicals that they're exposed to. So uh, certainly this diagram is in the book, along with several other very important diagrams and important clinical considerations, not only in terms of discussing the etiology of fibromyalgia, the cause of fibromyalgia, but also how to uh, treat it very effectively. So if you're interested in this topic, whether you're a doctor or a patient, uh, I think that you'll find the investment of $25 for this book to be well worth your time. And uh, I hope that it helps you uh, deal with fibromyalgia in whatever way that you do, whether it's as a patient or uh, as a clinician helping other patients. Thank you for your interest in this uh, topic, fibromyalgia, and its accurate clinical diagnosis. You'll find this and much more information uh, reviewed in my new book called Migraine Headaches, Hypothyroidism, and Fibromyalgia. This book was published in 2012. The cost is about $25 for 282 pages. It's available on Amazon.com, and it's also available from Amazon's publisher, CreateSpace.com. This is Dr. Vasquez, and thank you for your attention.